Did you know that you can paint absolutely anything with watercolor pencils? I've taught myself watercolor pencils over the past year and I am baffled when I see what's possible and how underrated they are. And in this video, I really want to show you the three essential watercolor pencil skills that I use to paint pretty much anything that I want. But first, I'll give you a quick tour of my supplies. I'm happy I get to use a brand new sketchbook by Stillman and Byrne. I haven't tried the brand before, but the paper seems like it should work very well with watercolor pencils because it's mixed media and it's fit for watercolor and wet mediums. It's also very thick, 270 grams per square meter and it's cold press. It's my favorite paper texture because cold press is smooth enough to create crisp details and the best is it looks like I'll be able to use many mediums in the other pages of the sketchbook with that paper. So I'm totally excited. I'll be using the great Faber-Castell Arbister watercolor pencils as well for my painting. I featured them in plenty of videos and for me, they're part of the top watercolor pencil brand in terms of quality and results. So my set has 60 colors, but if you can't afford such a large set, I think a smaller one like a 24 pencil set will already be a great place to start, so don't worry about that. All the other supplies that I'll use are my usual watercolor supplies right here, and I've linked everything in the description of the video, so if you need a reference, that's where you can find it. I've picked a complex topic today because I love this photo and how gracious the fish is. And I also like to challenge myself with the transparency. And I really want to show you what's possible when you learn the three skills I'm going to show you. The first skill that I feel that not many people are aware of is that with watercolor pencils, you can create a watercolor-like effect that looks smooth. In some of my videos, you will see me color directly on the sketch and then activate the pigment. But you don't always have to do it that way. For me, it depends on what I paint. And you can also mix and match the traditional coloring technique with watercolor smooth effects. There are no rules. This skill is awesome to have because you will avoid the streaky look watercolor pencils can give even after they were blended, especially when you use cheaper ones that don't dissolve well at all. And I'll link a specific video I made about that in the description. Now, how do you paint those smooth backgrounds? There are several ways. You can either use a scrap piece of watercolor paper, scribble with your chosen pencil on it, activate the paint, and use that as a palette to go paint a smooth wash elsewhere. Or you can get this palette, and thank you to my subscribers for bringing awareness around that one because it's designed so pencil pigments can grip their surface and be blended directly. And I'll have to make a video about that one because it's just an awesome tool. What's great with either technique is that you can even mix colors right on paper or the palette. So even when you don't have a large set of watercolor pencils, you don't have to feel limited. Now you can see that I'm applying a smooth wash of paint from what I've mixed on the palette. It's great because it's quick to do. The result is super smooth, just like watercolor. And for a background like this one, it's ideal. Also notice how much paint I'm getting from scribbling just a bit of pigment so quickly. So a little tip for backgrounds like these when you want them to look more fun and not just like a solid color is you can either fake parts of the edges with another brush that will be clean and just damp or you can create edges that will stay sharp and that you can shape however you like. And I find that here it makes the illustration feel more interesting. Now I want to show you another technique you can use to learn the skill of painting those smooth washes of paint. If you need to cover just a small area of your drawing, you can use a wet paintbrush to get paint directly from the tip of a pencil like I'm doing here with my orange watercolor pencil. It's really easy and fast, just like the other techniques. I do it again from the tip of the pencil to create smooth texture in the fish and curvy lines. And an advantage of the technique is you can get paint that's really saturated if you use a brush that is not too wet and if you insist on the lead to get plenty of pigment. You could also save broken leads of your watercolor pencils for that purpose.
To show you the difference, if I use the coloring technique rather than getting mixed paint directly on paper, first of all, it's going to be a lot longer to do, especially for a background, and it's likely the outcome won't be very smooth. Also, it really depends on your pencils. I know mine do blend well, even though I don't know of any brand that doesn't leave at least a few streaks, but for sure, the cheaper watercolor pencils will leave harsh lines beneath the blended paint, and with the previous methods, you'll be able to fix that problem and make the most of your watercolor pencils without breaking the bank or having to buy new ones, so it's a pretty cool trick. The downside of the cheaper pencils is that most times they'll be less pigmented, so you might need to layer a lot. And for me here, I wanted a very dark background so the fish can stand out because it's so light in color. So even with my qualitative pencils, I still repeated these steps of blending the paint on my palette and reapplying all around the fish many times. And the difference each time was I added more of my dark green and black colors to increase contrast. And you can see this technique was efficient because in the end it was looking really opaque and smooth. And I kept switching between blending the edges or leaving them sharp for interesting effects. Just make sure when you layer more and more coats of paints on top of each other that the previous layer is dry. That's really important, otherwise you'll lift some of the paint from the previous coat and it will be hard to get a darker and even background like this. As I'm pretty sure you can imagine, there is a lot more we can do with watercolor pencils because they resemble colored pencils so much and there is a lot of different textures and effects you can create. And with watercolor pencils, we can in fact create a unique pencil-like look that we can't with watercolor. So I like to use the lead to just color and shade directly the different parts of the fish. The precision makes it really easy to do and you can decide to activate the paint with a little bit of water. You really don't need a ton with watercolor pencil, or you could decide to just leave the pencil as it is and not blend it. Whenever you color on paper, always make sure the paper was dry because otherwise the pigment will activate itself right from the lead and that might be hard to remove completely. I'm lucky actually because this paper I'm using now does dry faster than my usual ash paper. So I get to just work without having to use a heat gun to make the process faster. And because watercolor pencils require so little water, the non-cotton features of the paper don't bother me at all. If you watch some of my videos, you probably already know that I'm very big on great watercolor papers when it comes to using watercolors, but for watercolor pencils, there's more flexibility. Another cool way of creating texture is to use watercolor techniques, think splatters and the dry brush technique in particular. To splatter, now you know how to create a puddle of paint from a watercolor pencil by using paper or a textured palette. You can use that to add paint to your paintbrush and flick it at the paper or make the droplets come out with your fingers. The other watercolor technique you can use with watercolor pencils is to create texture with a dry brush effect. So for that one, get some paint and then dab the paintbrush on the paper towel so the brush becomes a bit drier. This way, when you add the paint on paper, the coverage will be uneven because it's so dry. And if your paper is textured, this effect will show even more. Now, a technique that you won't find with watercolor is to just dip the lead of the pencil in water. This will dissolve the paint a bit, and you should notice strong additions of paint when you press the lead on paper directly. I like to use it for texture, for dark spots like these, because they do show very much, and the added texture to them also makes them pop slightly. And I also love to use it for bright white highlights. You'll quickly notice that when you try this, that you need to repeat the process of dipping the lead in water a lot because the wet pigment deposits itself on paper so easily that you'll need more. But overall, this technique is just absolutely fantastic when you need a strong addition of the pencil color and you want texture and coverage all at once. A 
great skill to leverage and learn with watercolor pencils is to use them just like graphite or colored pencils. For example, you can use the lead to easily touch up the areas you think need more color or more shading. You can see for me it helped create the transparency effects beneath the fence. I layered green to mimic the color of the water all around since that was what I used before. But I also added a lot of blue accents to keep the color of the fish showing. I activated some parts to get it to look more blended and smooth, but you don't even have to do it if you enjoy having a colored pencil texture showing through. Then you can use the tip of the pencil to create fine lines, but then it will be helpful to work with a sharp tip, so make sure you always have a pencil sharpener around you. My favorite way of adding details, and that's valid for a lot of mediums that I use, is to combine whatever I'm working with to other mediums. because. As much as I like to feature the techniques that are proper to one medium, like watercolor pencils, the end goal, for me at least, maybe for you, is to make the art to look as cool as I can. And if that means I need to use other things that we artists are lucky to even have access to, then I just go for it. So here, for example, I decided I wanted to add a white colored pencil, because that one in particular is waxy compared to my white paper style watercolor pencils which feels really dry in comparison. The whitening effect is subtle, but it works for what I'm trying to achieve. And you really can be creative here and try to think about what you have that could be useful in your watercolor pencil art. Same with a white gel pen. I like these a lot for sharp highlights because I can control where I add the gel more than what I can control with wet watercolor pencil bits of pigment. You can see I added a few accents and that really helped me finish the painting in a way that felt satisfying to me and I'm so happy to have made my first page look great. It really pumps me up to keep painting on the next ones. I hope you enjoyed this video, there are going to be plenty more you can find in this playlist when you want to learn how to use watercolor pencils or if you need guidance as to which ones to buy. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time!